I mostly do printmaking, uh, specializing in lino cut. Uh, it's a relief process. Um, a lot of my work starts off with uh, photography. Um, for depending on the subject, uh, a lot of the work I do is uh, documenting the Denver art scenes, um, and a lot of it has to do with like nature and just sort of my observations of, of what's around me. Uh, from there, I typically um, make some sort of drawing from it, and then I carve that drawing, and then I print it eventually. So it's it's essentially like um, <clears throat> it's essentially like going from one drawing to the next drawing to the next drawing to so by the end of it, it has a totally different look, um, but it's still kind of very much photo based. Uh, it's kind of started off as like a it's like a Christmas card project actually for um, some people I, I used to work with. Um, initially, it was like oh, I thought it'd be a more affordable way of uh, sending out cards. Um, and it wasn't; it was a lot more expensive. But I got like the bug, and it, it really got me. I just I just love the process, and I love what you could do with it. Uh, I understood it, and so I just kept going with it, and somehow here I am still doing it. So. so that's kind of like a, more of a recent development, um, at least as far as like me showing it. Um, I guess so. I've been thinking about it a lot. Like um, I like the idea of like dimensional translation. Where you go back and forth between um, 2D and 3D and 4D, and, and so it's it's this um, to do it in like this sort of like very deliberate way with the folding um, to take a 2D uh, piece of artwork and, and make it 3D, but really that it's based on a 3D or 4D uh, thing, you know, an experience, and then to bring it back to bring back those dimensions in some way. Um, and and to hopefully do it in a way that like adds meaning to it, and so that it's not just like a cool fold, but you know what does the fold mean? Um, just also the idea of like the material itself, like um, figuring out like what it can do, what it, how much uh, like tensile strength it has, how how much spring it has. It's, a, it's all very kind of like, a lot of it is play and exploration. Um, but it's something that I'm definitely like playing around with now. Uh, it's not something I'm super comfortable with, but I'm learning a lot as I go. Alter Gallery is a part of Birdseed Collective, uh, which is a, um, Local nonprofit that I work with. Um, we started Alto in 2016. Um, it was something that, and so I'm the director and co curator for it. Uh, we started um, before then, we had been doing like um, sort of pop up shows here and there. Um, we had certain local businesses, we would put up art on their walls. And it just seemed like this was the next step that we needed to take as, a, as an organization as a, as a, and as artists to, to have our own like brick and mortar um, where we, we could just have it open and run it the way we wanted to. And so uh, amazingly, we're still open. Uh, now we're in the Rhino, uh, so really close by, uh, very different space, but um, it's uh, it occupies a, a big part of my life and a big part of uh, um, my creative energies. <laughs> yeah, but I mean I love it. Uh, as far as like visual artists, um, I've yeah I, I mean 
I would say I'm, I'm mostly influenced by people that I uh, work with. I'm mostly influenced by the local artists that I actually see around me and who I can see their career sort of career path or career tra trajectory. Um, because that's like more real to me as opposed to like looking at some famous artist from, you know, wherever, who I have no connection with really. But I can look at a mural down the street and I know who that artist is and I know I can talk to that artist if I wanted to. You learn a lot more that way too. Um, yeah, in a way. So what I really like about printmaking um, is it's like, it's affordable. It's an affordable form of art that you can purchase. Um, it's, it takes away the idea of just like, there's just one special thing and it's just for, you know, with a print, you can make as many prints as you want. You can show these prints in, the, in so many different places. Um, and it's just a lot more accessible to people. Um, I like that idea a lot, as opposed to um, really trying to play up like exclusivity. I mean, I guess it, with regard to like nature, um, it's very, uh, it, it's a pretty like hands-on process. Um, it's, I mean, there is some like, technology just in terms of like me taking pictures and putting them on a computer but uh, the rest of it is like really kind of a hands-on process uh, from carving to even like just the paper I use it's uh, typically like cotton rag or 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 like a Japanese paper which is like usually like a mulberry or some natural fiber um, I mostly use like natural inks like soy based inks and so all of that um, definitely relates to like uh, to nature, like in a direct way. That, um, that I think probably informs the art in some way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, that's the that's the fun of group shows, of course. That um, uh, you're always going to meet somebody new. Um, I mean, there's this, there's a tendency sometimes where like people curate like kind of the same group of people together. Um, but it also opens up things to where like, um, maybe you have like a certain group of artists that show a lot together and you have another group and, and if you curate it well, you can bring those two groups that are maybe very different and bring them together and hopefully in doing so also create connections between them. So that's kind of a, a lot of the fun of curating. It's like you're, you're trying to like bridge this gap between um, not just um, artists and the public, but artists and each other, other artists. Uh, definitely. Um, so we're an arts-based organization, so we do, we do all kinds of stuff. Um, a lot of the arts-based stuff we do is actually like mural-based, which I don't do. And so a lot of the artists we work with are not necessarily um, the artists that I work with personally. Um, but what we do through Birdseed is definitely community oriented, it's community outreach, and that uh, definitely um, has made its way into the kind of work I make and what I try to uh, achieve with my work. Uh, as an artist, I'd just like to get better. Um, uh, quite honestly, like uh, as far as printmaking goes, um, I definitely want to uh, branch outside of what I'm super comfortable with, which is lino cut, and I definitely want to try more like etching and lithography, um, and 
really kind of whatever I can get my hands on. Um, but also like uh, get more comfortable with color. Uh, a lot of the work I've, the vast majority of work I've done in printmaking has been monochromatic. Um, part of that is like it's easier, but also part of it is like sort of a fear of uh, on my side of, of, of just the infinitude of, of color uh, mixing, you know, and um, so I want to get better at that. So I'm going to use the space I have and, and the people I'm around to sort of um, hopefully get better at that. Uh, but definitely also uh, Redline is really cool because all of the art, all the different programming they do, all the different community outreach. Um, so if I can sort of work my way into that, um, to that network and, and, and expand my own network, expand the, um, the skills I have there in, in terms of like uh, engaging with the community, um, that would be wonderful. I mean, as far as like printmaking goes, there's a lot of work that goes into it that uh, people aren't necessarily aware of. Um, it's very, it can drive you a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> Um, and uh, sometimes when people see pieces, they, they don't know everything that goes into it, you know, as with any art, really. Um, they don't know um, how much time and energy, but almost like, also like how much thought and how much caring you put into it and how much you, you, you put yourself into it. Um, and, and how to, like, there's this, how do you put that into, like, the context of, like, uh, trying to sell it and trying to evaluate, you know, um, trying to put a, a dollar amount on, on this thing that's like very real and personal to you. Um, it's, it's a big balance. And it's, it's something I'm still working on. So art made now. No, I mean, it's like, uh, geez, it's just wh whoever's doing whatever they're doing now. I, it's not, not a certain look or, I, or a set of ideas or, or anything like that. It's just, what are people doing now? And how can we support that? How can we support people that are alive and making work now? That's the real question about uh, contemporary art.